After almost 8 years since the announcement and after going through development hell, the Island 2 is finally here, developed by Dumbuster Studios using Unreal Engine 4. The team took full advantage of the engine to release one of the most polished Unreal Engine 4 titles, which is very rare to see these days. And visually the game looks beautiful, especially the incredible pre-baked lighting that makes the indoor area specifically look stunning. Also the texture work and assets are of good quality, and every scene and place is full of details. However, there are still some limitations, the most obvious one is the very low LOD and popping issues for foliage, shadows, and some details. When it comes to the graphics menu, it's what you expect from an Unreal Engine 4 game. We have settings for post-processing, shadows, effects, and so on. And today, we will see how each graphic setting scale in terms of visual and performance. So without any further ado, let's get going. Thankfully, the game has a shader compilation step which occur every time you launch the game, and it doesn't take a lot of time to finish, around 25 seconds for the first launch. And it's very effective as I saw no sign of shader compilation stutters, and the game runs very well, and overall the performance and frame rates delivery is consistent. In regards to image quality, the game only supports FSR 2.2 with no DLSS or XCSS, and FSR is a noticeable upgrade over native GAA, especially when it comes to small objects and details like here. And even though both FSR and GAA exhibit shimmering issues, FSR looks a little bit cleaner, but it's not perfect, FSR in this game suffers from this occlusion issue, which causes instability and aliasing in the background objects when they are positioning behind other objects as you can see here. Also FSR sometimes can cause performance drops like here. You can see I'm getting 85 FPS using native GAA, and if I go ahead and enable FSR, weirdly enough the FPS drops to 62. And I don't think this is related to the CPU, and it seems like a bug. So I hope Dumbuster Studios fix these FSR issues and add DLSS and XCSS in the future, because TAA in this game is not great. We also have a VRS solution, in the form of AMD Fidelity FX variable shading, which really did not significantly improve the performance in my system, and it makes some textures look blurry as you can see here. So if you can't see any performance gain with this option on your system, I recommend keeping it off. And the last setting for image quality is anti-aliasing, with three options here, FXAA, GAA low, and GAA high. Here both GAA low and GAA high looks almost identical, and the performance difference between all three options is negligible. So if you are thinking about using FXAA to get higher frame rates, there is no need to do that, and use GAA high instead. Moving on to view distance, this one of course adjusts the distance at which objects are rendered like here. And on the performance side when GPU bound going from low to even ultra costs around 1%, but when CPU bound like here going from low to ultra costs 8%. So here I recommend using low especially if you have a weaker CPU since even ultra view distance does not help with the popping issues this game has. And of course, if you have a good CPU, go for ultra view distance. And most Unreal Engine 4 games, post-processing controls a lot of effects, which makes it a demanding setting. But here in Dead Island 2, post-processing setting does not have a big impact on the visuals. First, it controls chromatic aberration effect, as you can see here and also slightly affect the quality of motion blur, and on the performance side going from low to ultra costs around 1%. And here since I don't like chromatic aberration or motion blur, I'll keep this one on low, but if you like these effects, use ultra post-processing. 
Next we have shadows, here quality wise only medium and higher options look decent and on the performance side this is one of the most demanding settings in the game because going from low to medium costs 3% to high and ultra 13%. So here in my opinion medium is the best balance between good performance and visuals. That's why I recommend using medium shadows. When it comes to textures, I can't compare the options here because the game loads the highest possible textures as long as you have enough VRAM. And speaking of VRAM, I can assure you from my playthrough that 8GB at native 1440p is enough to play the game using ultra texture quality. Moving on to effects, this one adjusts the quality of different visual effects. Like here with water, where you can see more water drops and medium and higher options alike low. And it also affects the density of particles like here. And it's quite demanding because here going from low to medium costs 2%, to high 3% and to ultra around 10%. So here since medium looks almost identical to high and ultra, I recommend medium effects. Foliage detail unfortunately does not affect foliage LOD or the density of foliage. But instead using medium or higher options adds environmental animations for trees and other foliage. And on the performance side going from low to medium and high costs around 1-2% and to ultra around 3%. Here since there is no noticeable visual difference between high, ultra and medium, I recommend using medium foliage detail. For ambient occlusion the game relies only on screen space solution and the form of SSAO. And SSAO here visually is so subtle as you can see here. And performance wise going from low to even ultra costs around 2%. So here I recommend ultra SSAO. Indirect shadows adds and improve object shadows and indirect light areas like here. Which really helps cover areas where SSAO is not effective. And performance wise going from low to medium costs around 4% and to high and ultra 5%. So here I recommend using at least medium and direct shadows. Screen space reflections in this game does not significantly affect the quality of reflections on glossy or mirror like surfaces. But instead using higher ultra adds reflections to rough surfaces like here. The only problem is that reflections on these surfaces looks grainy and noisy and using FSR makes things even worse. And performance wise going from low and medium to high and ultra costs around 14%. So here if those grainy reflections bother you, you can set SSR to low and save 14%. But if not, I recommend keeping SSR at ultra because it looks great and adds a lot to the visuals. And the last setting we have is shader quality. Here the description for this setting claims that it affects SSR. But this setting has no impact on screen space reflections. And it only adds film grain effect when using medium or higher options. And going from low to even ultra costs around 1%. Here since I really don't like film grain, I'll keep this one on low. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's now do a quick comparison between ultra preset and optimized settings. Here on average, I saw around 48% boost to performance by going from ultra preset to optimized settings. All in all, despite all the issues like the low LOD and subpar implementation of FSR, the Dylan 2 still managed to stand out as one of the most polished PC ports this year, which is not usual, especially for games that use a real engine 4. In regards to graphics settings performance, shadows, effects, and screen space reflections, 
are the most demanding settings and adjusting these settings should significantly improve the game's performance. And with that we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video leave a like, if not leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.